By the end of this lesson, I guarantee that you'll be able to make your grooves more musical, more human, and more interesting. Let's get started. What's happening everyone? Welcome into today's lesson. Clickbait aside, this is a really cool one. I'm really excited to share it with you. My name is Dave Major, and if you're brand new to the channel, welcome in, thank you for joining me today. If you do like this video, or any other video, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos that I do post, and then remember to hit the like button on this specific video so that I know that you dig it as much as I do. So let's get started with the lesson. Today is all about making your grooves more human, and a little tip that I use to make my grooves just more musical and serve the music that I play better. And that is to think in two bar phrases. So what do I mean by that? Well, a two bar groove is kind of like, just like what it says, it is a groove that lasts two bars and repeats every two bars. So why is that important? Why is that useful? Why is that a good thing to do? Well, generally a one bar phrase gives a more robotic, more loop based sound to the grooves that you're playing and the music that you're playing. Now that is not a bad thing. You know, things like Billy Jean or loads of eight classic rock stuff, loads of stuff is one bar grooves. But two bar grooves give you a more natural ebb and flow to the grooves that you're playing. The music has a more human interactive element. And personally, that's the kind of music that I like to listen to. So generally I'm defaulting to playing a two bar groove. So to help you really nail this down, let's talk about a concept called question and answer. When you ask questions in real life, you get an answer that hopefully is related to the question. If you ask someone, what's the time? And they say cheese sandwich, you're gonna run away pretty fast. If they answer, oh, it's half past 11, then you're gonna be like, oh, thanks, cheers, and on you go. So your answer in drumming and music needs to be related to the question that you ask. The question in this case is gonna be a groove, and then the answer is gonna be slight variation upon that groove. Every single time you ask the question, you can answer it differently. And thus forth, you can change and create new grooves infinitely. That's the plan at least. So you got that out of the way, I'm gonna show you three different ways to create your own two bar grooves. Let's get started with the bass drum. So we're gonna start with a basic groove that sounds like this. We're gonna answer that groove by changing the bass drum. Now what we're gonna do is let's start by moving the last bass drum, which is on the end of three, we're gonna move it forward one note in the second bar, and you get this. And then let's move it back and you get this. Now what's sometimes cool to do is to move the one of the second bar. So let's move that one forward one eighth note. So now let's add some extra notes. Let's add a 16th note after the very last note in the groove. So now it's, instead of just the A on its own, it's gonna go and A. Sounds like this. You can see how tiny little changes make the groove more human and it's not it's just a total separate idea where we're just sort of playing a random groove when one bar and a totally random groove in the other. 
it's closely linked. Now we've done the bass drum, you can obviously keep exploring that, get as crazy as you want in the second bar, but let's talk about the snare drum. There's two things we can do. We can talk about ghosts, and we can talk about backbeats. So if you wanna learn more about your ghost notes, check out this video, because I did it a couple of weeks ago. It's three different ways to spice up your ghost note grooves, because we're gonna use these concepts just now. Let's deal with the ghost notes. Let's add in ghost notes in the second bar. Sounds like this. So that's ghost notes, you can obviously go as crazy as you want. Backbeats are really cool. If you just shift the backbeat, it's an old funk trick. Shift the backbeat, let's say beat four in the second bar, forward one eighth note, so to the and of four, you get a totally different groove, check it out. So now we've done the right foot, we've done the left hand. The right hand now has a, a total role to play here. And we can start by playing different right hand melodies in our second bar. We could start to add some little flurries, so little underhand hi-hats, we can add some little triplet phrasing, we can sort of use different stackers and things, and that sounds like this. Now you might be thinking, well done if you've got this far by the way, you might be thinking, oh, I, that's all very long, I understand it, but how do I start it? Well, it's really simple. You just have to sing it. Now I don't mean like sing like operatic style, I'm not gonna subject you to that. Beatbox it. So beatbox a phrase. When we sing and beatbox and think with our voice as opposed to our head, we generally play more musically. We think of more musical phrases. There's rests in there, this is really important. The drums don't require you to breathe to play the instrument like a saxophone does or a trombone does. And therefore we don't need to rely on the lung capacity to play phrases. We can just keep playing. Same thing with guitar. You can keep going and going and going. But if you sing it, you're never ever gonna do that. So to finish this lesson, I'm just gonna combine everything together. I'm gonna think of a two bar phrase. I'm gonna mix up the bass drum, the left hand, the hi-hat lifts and the melodies. I'm gonna be singing it in my head, singing it out loud, I don't know. But if you've enjoyed this lesson, remember hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next lesson. Hit like and I will see you next week. Take care guys and happy drumming.